everybody and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the Rattel Rebuildable Pod System. Um, this is actually just a rebuildable all-in-one device. This is made from MechLife. It does go up to a total of 80 watts and it does hold a single coil. Um, it takes an 18650, one 18650 battery. It is not included. You do have temperature control. You've got voltage. You've got bypass for something like this. That's kind of cool. In addition to that, it does come with a standard drip tip, but you can purchase additional panels and drip tips, such as the one that I have here, um, to make it your own. So I really like that. So it's going to be very versatile in that sense. So let's go down. We're going to take a closer look at the Rattel Rebuildable Pod Kit by MechLife. And then we'll come back up. We'll have a vape on it. And then I'll give you my pros and cons. So here's the Rattel Rebuildable Pod. Okay, so here we are with the Rattel Rebuildable Pod. This is from MechLife. This is a sample package. I'm not sure what the retail package is going to look like. You have your scratch off authenticity. It says MechLife on here. It tells you what the kit contents are on the back. And then inside, you're going to get your user manual and it's going to show you the colors that it comes in. It comes in all black, red and blue, blue and red, black and white and green and black. And this is the little manual that it has. It's going to tell you what all the screens are, what the buttons are. It's an 80 watt device. The resistance ranges, the temperature control ranges. It tells you how to build on it and everything else. But we're going to be doing that. So we're not going to go over that too much. In this package here, you've got some cotton and you've got some mouth to lung coils that they do provide. And then they also put all the materials over here. And then you've got your device. You're also going to have an extra um, accessory pouch right here and this is going to be pretty small it's going to include a uh, flathead screwdriver you're going to get some extra grub screws you're going to get some o-rings and then you're going to get um, some extra plugs and then you're going to get a usb charging cable now personally if you have any removable battery device i never recommend charging it while it's in the device so yeah that's my spiel on that one this is an 18650 device. The battery does not come with it, so you would have to actually use your own battery. It does go from 5 watts to 80 watts. It does have these um, panels that you can remove. You can remove it like this. It does say mech chip here. You can also remove the other ones just like this. And you can just purchase the additional panels if you want to. So as long as you have one and you want to purchase additional panels, you can. On the top of it, you do have a removable 510 drip tip, so you can use any 510 drip tip that you have. This is also how you take off the pod. What you're gonna do is you're gonna unscrew this little nub that's right here for your drip tip. You're gonna unscrew that first. It does have to be unscrewed in order for you to release it because this is actually holding your pod into place so that it doesn't come out. And then through the other side, the back side, you're just gonna push your pod out and then it will come out the front. So let's pushing that out and release it from the front. And then basically you've got the shell. Again, it does take an 18650 battery that is not included. It does have positive and negative here so that you know which orientation to put your battery. You know not to put it through the back because there's not enough space. So it would be through this side and then to push out your battery, you're just gonna use this side. So it's pretty much, it reminds me a lot of the first, um, the first squonk mod that Tony B came out with, the Pulse squonk, squonk mod, that's what it reminds me of. But anyway, so this is the pod itself. It does hold four mils of e-liquid and it looks just like this. So you do have the smoked out color, but you can still see through it. On the top again, this is the part that screws into the top. On the bottom, you've got your connector here, which actually connects to here to make it work. And then you've got adjustable airflow right on the bottom. Now you can have it fully open like this, or you can cut it down a little bit, a little bit, all the way down to one hole if you wanna make it more of a mouth to lung uh, draw. Now to get into the pod itself, what you're gonna do is just unscrew this piece here. Sometimes it comes out with the coil and sometimes it doesn't. This part coming out like this is just fine because this is what you're gonna do if you're building on it, which this is a rebuildable. You will need to actually dry fire the coil to make sure that it's heating properly. Once you take that bottom ring off, you've actually got a standard 510, which I think is amazing that they did that. On the bottom, it's sort of like a GTA style or like an RDTA style because your e-liquid is gonna be coming in here. It's gonna be coming up there. It's gonna be wetting your wicks. So it's really, really nice in that sense. Now let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more because this is really teeny weeny weeny weeny. 
Okay, and then your coil leg is actually gonna go through here and here. This is actually for your airflow, for additional airflow. You're gonna get some from the bottom, but this is to make it for additional airflow. So for the coil legs, you're gonna go ahead and open up these and they just, they open up really, really nice and easy. You can see it opening right there. And then you open this one up here. And these are not for exotic coils. I mean, I know I'm making it look big because of the fact that I'm zoomed in, but it's really, really small. So there you go with those. And then to open up your airflow, if you want a more loose um, airflow, you just go ahead and unscrew this middle part here. You don't wanna go over the top right here. This will open it up. And it'll be like right to this part here will actually be opened up if you can see. And that's just gonna give you more airflow. I love a lot of airflow, so I actually like rocking it like this. But anyway, so let me just open up this one a little bit more, open up this one a little bit more. We're gonna get to building on this. See how it's got that 510 right there? All you gotta do is just screw it down on your mod. And what I'm gonna do is I actually have my fuse Clapton's here by Coil Clout. These do have a three um, millimeter inner diameter. So I did go ahead and tighten it on a 2.5 millimeter jig so that I can actually get it smaller. So this is ready to go. All I need to do is just insert my coil legs. And we're gonna put one leg in here and one leg in here. There we go. And it slides in really, really easy, just like that. Just gonna pull this through. I want it as close to it as possible and we can adjust it after it's already in. I'm gonna just put that in there like that and then screw it down. It's literally that simple. It can't get any easier than that, it really can. I'm gonna screw that one down and then screw this one down. And then we'll straighten it up. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten up this coil. Go. And then put that through there. It's just a little bit tighter, so I like this one here. And then I'm just gonna straighten it up a little bit more. Just like that. Good to go. And you wanna make sure that you're cutting it flush to the base. Go there, and then right there. There you go. And now we're gonna go ahead and start heating them up. You wanna make sure that your coil is not touching the center post, because if it's touching this post here, it will short. Okay, so, and then of course, you've got your wicking channels here. A bigger diameter or inner diameter or more wraps or something, it would actually block that part. So that's why I really like this size. 2.5 millimeter inner diameter, I think is best. So let's go ahead and start heating this one up. Oh yeah. Starting to heat up really, really nice. There we go. Oh yeah, a little strumming. And there we go, nice and heated up. So now I'm just gonna grab some cotton and then we'll whip this baby up. For today's cotton, I am gonna be using my Kendo Vape Cotton Gold Edition. Now you can get this and this at coilclout.com. If you use the code Wendy, you actually get 15% off right now. Put that through there just like this. I actually love the simplicity of this build deck. I think that it's amazing that they made it into a, like a pod type of device. And that's what you do there. Get some scissors and we'll cut this off. So I'm gonna get some scissors here, get some scissors here. Chop, chop. And then of course my handy dandy tweezers. We'll fluff this out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, nice and fluffy. Trim off the excess. And then we're just gonna drop it right into that wicking channel that I showed you, right there. Just drop it right in there. There we go. We do want it to come down a little bit so that that way it's gonna be able to get saturated. And you don't want it too tight, but enough to where you can actually put your tweezers right through it. And then again, just put it right through there. I'm trying to keep you in focus. And put that in there. Again, it's a really, really small space, but you can get it in. There we go. And then we've got our cotton hanging from the bottom, nice and loose, so that we can get it nice and saturated. Nice and loose, and there we go. That's it, that's all we gotta do. Canita de queso.
Oh my gosh, cream cheese flaky pastry for me. Yes, I absolutely love this. You can go to ENB, shopenb.com, use the code Wendy Vapes, and you can get some percentage off of it. It's so good. If you haven't seen my review, check it out. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some over here. I'm gonna put on the coil and then start firing it. This way you're getting the cotton saturated within the coil and that reduces any type of break-in time. Oh yes. So now what we can do is go ahead and we're gonna put this back into the pod system. So I'm gonna take that off. And the next part is to just go ahead and plug that in like this. You don't have to plug it in any certain way because the part that's actually gonna be holding this in is gonna be this piece here with the airflow ring on it. So you do wanna make sure that you get that threaded in there correctly. There we go. And then we're gonna tighten it down. Now, if you do not have this tightened down right, you won't be able to fit your pod back in here. So you, you'll you know, you'll know if it's not in there right. Now, if you notice, it's got all these little holes right there. That's your wicking ports so that the e-liquid can actually travel into wet your wicks. I think that's great. And it's every single spot around it. So yeah, definitely a plus. Close it down. I'm gonna open it up because I would like it fully open, making sure that you have that airflow open before you put it in there. And that way you know. And then to fill it, you've got this little tiny L plug here. Um, you can go ahead and lift that up like this and that's where you will fill your e-liquid. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this. I don't mind the plug itself. It's this extra piece here. Sometimes when you're unscrewing the bottom and this is down, this little flap will get in the way. Um, that's just my experience with it. If you notice, see, it's like right there. When I go to do it, it's bending it. So just be careful of that. But otherwise, it does fit in there. And plus, they give you two extra plugs, which I think is great. So just in case. Now, again, this does hold four mils of e-liquid, which is a huge capacity for any type of pod system. You want to kind of tilt it over, though, because that way you make sure that you get some e-liquid on this side as well. So if you notice, I'm actually putting it sideways to fill this. Four mils, it feels like I'm I'm filling it forever. <laughs> there you go. And then plug that up, just like that. You've got your little L there. Then all you have to do is just slide your pot in like this. Fits right in there. There we go. And then we're gonna put on our drip tip to hold it in place, because if not, it's loose. You see how it's loose? This actually holds it in place. There we go. And then from here, all you need to do is put in your battery, of course, plus, minus, Let me zoom this out a little bit, plus, minus. So you wanna press down on here, this is spring loaded, so you wanna press on the bottom first and then put in the top like that. And then you can put on your panels. Now, in addition to the panels that I received, I actually got some extra panels so I can show you that you can change out your panels. These are the ones that it came with, the black and white with the standard drip tip, but you can actually do additional color panels. Like these, you can purchase separately. And then it comes with this resin drip tip right here, and you can change out your drip tip just like this. So if I want to change out my panels and drip tip, all I gotta do is just take out the other drip tip, put this one in like this, give it a little turn. There we go. And then that's what it looks like with the drip tip and new panels, look at that. I love when you can actually accessorize and I think it looks really, really cool like this. So we're gonna leave it like this with these panels, even though I really like the black and white, I'm gonna keep this on because I have the matching drip tip. Is your power button, your up, your down, and then your USB. To turn the device on, you're gonna click it five times, one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna turn the device on. It's gonna say mech chip on it since it has a mech life chip in it um you're gonna see a p for power that's your wattage mode it's gonna give you your wattage setting it's gonna give you resistance your voltage and then your battery setting you can actually go from five watts to 80 watts as your highest wattage it does scroll in one watt increments unless you're scrolling like one button at a time then it's 0.1 watt increments to change the settings it's three clicks so three clicks, you're gonna go to the voltage setting. That is the next setting over. In this setting, it does go up to a total of eight volts, but it does read it based off of your battery. One, two, three, and your resistance, of course. And then you've got your bypass. This basically turns it into a mechanical mod. And then you've got stainless steel temperature control. 
You've got nickel temperature control, titanium temperature control, and this does go in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and it does round robin. So you can actually go down and then it'll go as low as 100 degrees Celsius, up to 315 degrees Celsius and 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So take that down and then it does round robin. One, two, three. This is gonna get you back into your power mode and that's pretty much it. Very, very user friendly in that sense. For the majority, I don't think that's, that people are gonna be using temperature control all that much. I would not recommend bypass mode unless you are uh, very well versed in Ohm's Law and things like that because it does turn it into a mechanical mod and the same goes for the voltage. That's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and go on top. Let's take a vape and I'm gonna give you all my thoughts on the Mech Life Rattel Rebuildable Pod System. Okay, so here we are back on top with the Rattel uh, rebuildable pod by mech life and um yeah i just i love it together with this fancy drip tip i'm gonna actually change it over to the other drip tip just so that you can see what it looks like with the standard drip tip and we'll take it there's a standard drip tip and i'm gonna change out my panels let's go ahead and put the black and white back on just so that you can see what it looks like all put together with the black and white Oh, this is the fun part about this is the fact that you can literally change it and look totally different because of the style that you're putting in there whether or not you have the fancy drip tip or you've got the standard drip tip and that's what it looks like with the black and white i absolutely love the black and white but i love this fancy drip tip and the fact that i'm wearing red so that's why i changed it to red but you can have either one that easy to change so let's go ahead and have a vape Clouds. Like you would not, this to me, totally honest here, does not feel like a pod system at all. It does not give me that pod vibe at all. It's got tremendous airflow, it's rebuildable, and it's got cloudage, like unbelievable clouds and flavor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the, um, the airflow a little bit. That way we can adjust that. Turn that down some. That way I can make it a little bit more restrictive. There we go. Put that one down. And let's try it again. Still clouds. I like it personally all the way open with the airflow all the way open. Being that it doesn't have like a glass on the panels themselves, the airflow is actually coming in from that bottom, um, from the from the inside, and then it's hitting your, your um, pod or cartridge or whatever you want to call it. Now, I personally like it all the way open. I'm changing it right there. I like it all the way open. I like an airy vape, and this is no different than that. All right, so flavor on here is very, very good. Clouds, very, very good. Easy to build, very, very simple. It's single coil, so you don't have to worry about that. Wicking, you just want to be careful that you're not overstuffing the wicking in the channels because if you put too much cotton, it's going to choke it out, and then, of course, you, have, you risk having a dry hit. I love the fact that there is actually juice holes all the way around that it, you're, you know that it's getting saturated everywhere because they're actually right in there. You can see all the little holes right there. That just shows you that um, the juice is gonna go in those holes, it's gonna saturate your wicks, and then of course your, your coil. Um, so I think that that's great. I love exchangeable panels. I love when you can customize it and you can change it out. That to me is a definite pro. Um, so that is, is going to be my, my biggest pro is the fact that I can change it out. I can even ha rock two different sides if I want to. I, it's very, very versatile. To me, again, it's not really a pod system and I don't know if I would recommend this for new users. Honestly, I probably would not recommend this for new users because the fact that you do need to know your Ohm's Law, you will need to know your battery safety because of the fact that you are building on it. It is a rebuildable, so it's like an RBA base for a pod or a cartridge, so you definitely want to be careful with that. It does take one single 18650 battery. That battery is not included. I get a lot of questions like that sometimes down in the comments, so I want to stress that. Um, it does come with two different coils, so you do have mounts along coils that are included, so that will make it an even more restrictive vape where you can cut it down. It's going to give you a little bit um, less vapor and um, it's more mouth to lung, but it's still never going to be a true mouth to lung. It's going to be a really, really loose mouth to lung 
or a super restrictive direct lung. But I personally like it as a direct lung. I will not lie to you, I love the shape of this. This reminds me of the um, the Foxy by Drew, from the Druga Foxy by Ogvape. It literally, like, it's almost the same size, so that's what I compare it to. Um, this is without, it's like an all-in-one, so everything's included in here. So it's actually shorter than this with the short tank on it or RTA on it. So it, I love that. Um, the feel of it, ha I love boxy vapes, and this is very, very boxy. So I really like the feel of this in my hand. It just, it works. It really, really does. So I'm going to put the fancy drip tip on here. <laughs> so I really like that. There is one huge con for me, and that con for me, it, well, there's there's a couple, con, not cons, like subjective nitpicks. One is a con and one is a nitpick. The first con is actually going to be the fill method. I don't like that little L piece right here. I, I think that that's an extra piece that really shouldn't be there I because when you're messing with the airflow or anything, it literally like just keeps popping up and I'm scared that it's going to open it up. It won't because you're not really doing that a lot, but you know, I just have to mention that because it's something I really don't like. I'm not sure why they made an L like that. They should have just cut off that piece right there, which is probably something I'm going to do later on. I like the fact that it's held together all together. It's not loose or anything by the drip tip. I, I really like that. I I know that you would have to remove the drip tip, take out the pod, redo it and everything else when you're going to be changing out your coils or re-wicking. But to fill it, you don't have to. To fill it, all you have to do is just lift this up. So that does make ease of use, in my opinion. Um, now, the resin drip tip and the extra panels, I think is a great, great, I, I, I'm so glad that they came out with that because it does make for advice that you can customize to your liking and who you are or who, who what, how you like to be. So I really like that. Um, it gives you temperature control, voltage. It gives you everything that you could ever want. Um, I personally would never rock it with anything other than wattage, but that's just my personal vaping um, style. So I did want to mention that. Um, all in one, it's, to me, this is more of an all in one. This, whenever it's all inclusive in the inside, to me, it's an all in one. The only thing on the outside is going to be your drip tip and of course your buttons. So to me, it's more of an all in one. I wouldn't necessarily call this a pod. Um, it has a pod type cartridge or a pod type fill, but I don't, I don't really consider it a pod being that it does have that RBA base. Again, it does hold four mils of e-liquid. That to me is absolutely amazing. I love, love, love bigger capacities. Being that it is somewhat of an all-in-one or a pod style device, four mils is just perfect. I would have liked possibly maybe six mils and that's just stretching it because I know I'm a little bit picky, but I like the more the e-liquid capacity I can get, the better. I love the feel of a boxy mod though. So this to me is very, very... The, just the looks of it and the feel of it is definitely something that I'm interested in because I do love the feel of it. It just, it feels so substantial. Having that viewing window, you're never going to have to guess like how much e-liquid you have. Single 18650, everybody's pretty much got 18650 batteries laying around everywhere. So I think that's great. Being that it is, it's not fully airy like an RTA or fully airy like a sub ohm tank, but it does have a lot of airflow. But I don't think that you're going to be going through the batteries too much because the fact that you're not going to heat up that wattage and you're not going to put something in here that's got a super low resistance. My resistance on this right now is a 0.33. That's the resistance that I have in it and it's perfect. I have it at 63.3 watts. Really, really open. This is my style of vaping. It really is. It's just, it's like they made a pod for me. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much it for my review. The only real thing is going to be that plug system. I don't like that. And the other thing is the fact, which is a nitpick, is that I can't lock the keys. In any type of device like this, whenever I'm holding it like this, I do like to have my keys locked. Not the whole thing, but just the keys so that I'm not changing my wattage by accident. The good thing is, is that they're kind of recessed a little bit, so you're not hitting them by accident. So it's not a big deal on this, but it is something that for my vaping style was something that I would have liked to see, you know, is to have it lock. 
Other than that, there's no other settings other than changing the different type of variation um, settings, but that's pretty much it. But it's very, very simple in that sense. So if you are wanting to go up from pods to maybe rebuildables or you're already into rebuildables, but you want something a little bit more stealthy. Kind of, in a way, I don't even know. Um, I, I like it. I personally like it. This is definitely a nice all-in-one. If I'm if I'm putting it in a category, this to me would be in the all-in-one category with a rebuildable section. So this would definitely be something that I like. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for my review. If you like the review, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for sending this my way for a review. I absolutely love the fact that you can change it and you can make it yours. You can customize it. Um, it just, it makes for a really, really nice device. Thank you again, MechLife. And yeah, check them out. Rattel Rebuildable Pod by MechLife. And I will see you in the next one.